All right, good afternoon, my friends. Uh, we're going to do some more reading from Olive's Ocean. Thinking about getting through chapter... Well, I forget, like maybe 52 or so. We'll see. But we're starting right now in chapter 47. As you can see in the background, room starting to come together. Just starting to fill the room. Um, having some fun with home improvements. What can I say? All right. So, chapter 47, Whirlwind in a Kitchen. Martha peeked into the kitchen. Gabby was alone, hunched forward over the sink at work. Will you play? asked Martha, holding up the Parcheesi box. Her invitation was accompanied by an uncertain smile. Gabby turned. Of course, she said. She brought Lucy's empty baby food jars home from the restaurant and was rinsing them out. On the counter, the row of empty, clean jars was growing. You know, darling, we haven't had our sharing session yet today. Martha swallowed. I know, she said tentatively. She had only one thing left worth telling, the kiss, and she couldn't do it. She couldn't bear to talk about it. I just don't know what... Hey, I'll play, said Vince, blasting into the kitchen. Sure, said Martha, relieved. Set up the game, said Godby. I'll watch, said Martha's mother, suddenly materializing at Martha's shoulder. She stroked her daughter's hair and then whispered into her ear, Do you want to talk? Just us. Martha pressed a fingertip to the spot on her neck where she had felt her mother's breath. She shook her head definitively. No. I want play! It was Lucy racing to the table and grabbing the edge with both hands. You're too little, said her father. He was a few steps behind Lucy. The newspaper under his arm was falling out in sections. Come back here, Lucy. Let's go look at those rocks and shells you've collected. Martha was getting the board ready. I want blue, she said. I'm green, said Vince. Mine, shouted Lucy. I'll get potato chips, said Vince. Okay, so I've got to stop right here, actually, for a second. It's making me think of, well, how things are going right now, right? All of us are kind of trapped in our house a little bit, if you will, surrounded by family. So it kind of reminds me that Martha's making the most of it. Her family's to be making the most of it. And finally, actually getting that vacation where the family can enjoy some time together. I suggest we all do the same. All right, here we go. Chair legs scraped against the floor. A cupboard door slammed shut. Lucy circled and shrieked. Bah! Martha's father slipped on the newspaper, tearing it. Dice rolled off the tabletop and clattered across linoleum. The room was buzzing, crammed with people and movement and noise, and Martha hoped that everything that was filling the kitchen would push everything else out of her head. Okay, well, I hope your time's not so crazy. A little less chaos, right? Chapter 48 is called Later. Later, in bed, Martha flounced about, unable to sleep. She snapped on the bedside light and tried to continue all the story, but found it too painful. She flipped to a clean page in the middle of her notebook and managed to write the following. Notes for later. Olive finally realizes that James is really a stupid, flat-faced boy with dull, dark blonde hair and pink skin with a brain the heart the size of a microbe. Microbe. Use this word specifically. Microbes cause disease. Oof. And there we go. Martha, once again, kind of using what's happening in her life uh, in her writing, right? Chapter 49, Later Still. Later still in the middle of the night, Martha just had to get out of bed. As quietly as possible, she slipped through the sleeping house. As if by a magnet, she was pulled down to the kitchen. A band of amber light leaked out from beneath the closed kitchen door. Slowly, Martha swung the door open. Godby. She looked like a ghost of herself. She was dressed all in white, white nightgown, flimsy white bathrobe, white satin slippers, and the dimmed hanging light behind her made a nimbus around her head, like, like a little halo. Hi, Martha whispered. 
Gobby was standing by the table, drying her hands vigorously in a towel. Oh, sweetie, you're up late. She glanced at the brass clock above the door. Or should I say early? Can't sleep. Ah, me neither. But I thought it was a curse of old age, not youth. Martha shrugged. Dad always says I have an old soul. He should know. Martha crossed the room, joining Godby at the table. Finished with the towel, Goldby, Godby folded it and draped it over the top rung of the nearest chair. Suddenly, Godby's hands, which had been hidden by the towel, were revealed to Martha. <gasps> Martha gasped. Oh my gosh, what happened? Oh, this? Just food coloring. Godby laughed silently and spread her fingers for Martha to see. <laughs> see? Her crippy, knotted hands looked sallow and horribly bruised. They were stained red, blue, and purple and yellow. If you didn't know the truth, I can see where you'd think something hideous had happened. I'll make sure I explain it to your father first thing in the morning before he calls 911. What were you doing? asked Martha, inclining her head. Ah, I'll show you. Martha followed Gobby to the counter on the other side of the room. Look, said Gobby, sweeping her arm in an arc towards the two windows by the sink. The baby food jars, said Martha. Can't get the proper effect now in the dark, but tomorrow during daylight, the sun will make them glow and it will filter through them and, I hope, send colors all around. Not all, but most of the baby food jars had been used by Godby. She had filled them with water. The water had been tinted with food coloring. The jars sat on the window sills and on the upper ledges of the window sashes. Martha thought of stained glass and pictured rainbows all over the kitchen, walls, ceilings, countertops. Kind of a silly thing to do, I guess, said Godby, her eyes shining above her glasses. But it'll be pretty, I think. It's not silly, said Martha. What gave you the idea? Come, said Gabby. I need to sit down. Gingerly, they pulled out chairs and sat at the table. The idea, Gabby began, her voice low, came to me in a dream. Martha listened, her mouth pursed in concentration, her chin tucked into her fists. I suppose. I've had a recurring dream. Gabby explained, in which I'm standing on a beach. I'm a young girl. The waves are coming in, cresting before me, splashing my legs. But oddly, there is no sound. Each wave is a color, red, purple, pink, apricot, blue, electric green, and the colors repeat. The waves swell and rise higher and higher. I get pulled out to sea, but I'm not frightened. I stay on top of the water, almost floating, riding the waves, curled up like a shrimp. The sun shines through the water, and the colors are brilliant. Then I travel downward through the water. The colors are layered now, horizontal like stripes. Shadows flicker. I sink deeper and deeper, watching my skin change color. Her voice trails off. Then I always wake up, said Godby. She blinked owlishly. Martha looked at her arms and imagined what they would look like in Gobby's dreams. Gobby said, I must have been thinking about the dream and about my story of a girl who moved away from the ocean, hence the bottles of colored water. Oh, the girl who saved the ocean in a bottle, said Martha, remembering Gobby's earlier writing. Idle thoughts, said Gobby. Oh, dear. Silence fell between them. Martha yawned. Gobby's breathing thickened. After a minute, Gobby changed the subject. Seeing as it's after midnight, she said, you could tell me two things. We need to make up for yesterday. Martha shrugged uncomfortably, pinching her neck with her shoulders. Her eyes stung. What is it? asked Gobby. I guess I don't know what... I'm, I'm kind of worn out of telling you about me. Martha's voice was threaded with hesitancy. She shifted about in her chair. Can I, can I not tell me, can I not tell you about me anymore? Is that okay? 
Oh, sweetie, of course. I didn't mean for this to be work. But there was something Martha wanted to know. Some advice she needed. But can I ask you something? Yes. What do you do when you're really, really sad? When you're full of dread is, is what she really meant. Gabby exhaled through her nose, making a whistling sound. Hmm. When I'm genuinely suffering, I try to think of someone worse off than I am. And then if it happens to be someone I know and I'm feeling particularly saintly, I try to do something nice for him or her. After a beat, she placed the back of her hand on her forehead and cocked her head towards the ceiling. Oh, dear, listen to your grandmother blather. She waved her hands aside. It was quiet. Martha sniffed and gazed off. <sighs> she yawned again. Then she played with her hands, studied them until they became unfamiliar. Puckers of skin at her knuckles, the little pale hairs, the tracery of veins. All these things grew ugly before her eyes, old. Beautiful, said Godby absently. Your hands are 70 years younger than mine. Martha let the focus of her eyes go soft, and then something occurred to her. She felt it like a charge. Gabby, she said, can I have one of the empty jars? Please, one you didn't use? Gabby nodded. Martha thanked her grandmother and hugged her. She chose a jar from among those left on the counter. Then, hardly able to hold up her head, she shuffled off to bed, bleary-eyed, carrying the empty jar as if it were a rare shell. Chapter 50, and I'll end with this one. It's short. Confirmed. Before going down to breakfast the next morning, Martha reread the journal page from Olive, memorizing part. I also hope that one day I can go to a real ocean, such as the Atlantic or Pacific. Doing this confirmed Martha's idea. She now had something with which to combat the burden of her mood. What do you think it was? What do you think her idea is? Gabby talked about doing something nice for someone else when she was feeling really sad. Martha had an idea. It involves using a baby food jar. And then she reread the part in her journal about Olive wishing she could visit the ocean. Hmm. What do you think? Comment below this video. Let me know what your thoughts are. All right. Uh, later this afternoon, I'll be doing a video uh, about page 11 on the iReady packet uh, where I'm reading some homophones so you can hear me read them and see if you are correct in how to pronounce them. All right, guys, have a great rest of your day. All right. Peace, as the kids say. Later.